Using the right tools is key to doing a good job, and the same is true for SEO. But some tools are more expensive than others and aren't strictly necessary. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the SEO tools that I personally use, and where relevant, I'll be explaining which ones you should be using as a beginner, an intermediate, or an advanced level SEO or affiliate marketer. By the way, I've used a ton of other tools because I do suffer from shiny object syndrome, so we won't be including those tools here. Instead, I want this video to help you be successful, but also save you money by avoiding the tools that you don't really need. We're moving fast. There will be links to the products and services in the descriptions. Some of those will be affiliate links, and I'll also link in some resources for you too. So let's go. The first tool that I use every single day is Ahrefs. You could substitute this for SEMrush if you prefer that tool. Now, this is something that can be useful for a beginner, an intermediate, and an advanced level SEO, but it is costly. So if you're a beginner or maybe even an intermediate that's not earning quite enough to cover the cost of this tool, then sign up for a trial, get the data that you need, export it, and cancel the subscription until you can afford to do it on a monthly basis. I tend to use it for competitor analysis, looking at their backlink profiles, the keywords that they rank for, also use it for keyword research, and it probably is the most comprehensive SEO tool that I use when it comes to research and analysis. Second on the list is one that I came across this year, and there's a review coming soon on this channel for it, and it is Keyword Chef. Now, this is a much more cost-effective tool. It is definitely useful for beginners, but it can also be used by intermediate and advanced level SEOs. I've used it recently on my age domain project, and it's perfect for identifying low competition keywords that are very rankable. Great for when you're starting a brand new project. Third on the list, and this is still staying within the realm of keyword research, and it is Writer Zen. I did a review on this product a few months ago, so I'll link that in the description. But again, it's a very affordable SEO tool, especially if you can grab it on the AppSumo deal, and it even features some AI writing software built in too. Next up is the SerpWorks Chrome extension. Again, this is a tool that I use on a daily basis. It's pretty affordable and it's perfect for competitor analysis. It gives you Majestic data, it gives you SEMrush data. So you've got all this backlink data as well as on-page signal data that is really useful and actionable. And I use it, like I say, every single day. Next is another Chrome extension and this one is called Detailed. This is really useful for identifying on-page SEO signals, such as heading tags, meta titles, metadata, word counts, in links, out links from a particular page. And this again is ideal for auditing your own website and identifying any potential gaps or issues with your on-page SEO, but also for identifying what your competitors are doing and potentially being able to reverse engineer their processes. I would definitely suggest Detailed is ideal for beginners, but it can be used at all levels and it's free. Next up, we have another free plugin and this is Rank Math. You could substitute this with Yoast if you want to, but Rank Math is my SEO plugin of choice now. If you don't know what Rank Math is, there are tons of resources out there on it, but essentially it allows you to set up your on-page SEO signals at a page level, but also on a site-wide level. It will also sort out your sitemap as well as a ton of other on-page SEO stuff. Sticking with on-page and moving into a little bit more technical SEO now is Screaming Frog. Now, this again is a free tool. It might be a little bit complex for beginners, but particularly intermediate and advanced level SEOs should be using Screaming Frog within their arsenal. I've never actually gone as far as to go for the paid version, although it probably is worth it. I get enough functionality out of the free version. And again, it's ideal for auditing your own sites as well as competitor sites. And it gives you access to an absolute ton of on-page SEO data. Now, the next one isn't necessarily an SEO tool, but it is important for your SEO and particularly for your ranking and your core web vitals and all that sort of stuff. And it is to get good hosting. Now, there are tons of really good hosting providers out there, but for me, 
Site Ground and WPX are really beginner friendly hosting providers. For the more advanced level users, you might want to look at plans on Cloudways, but for the beginners and intermediates, I'd suggest sticking with plans on WPX, which would be my number one pick, and SiteGround being my number two, because they give really good support, they're pretty fast, and they're really beginner friendly. Next up, we have another free tool, and it seems pretty obvious, but it is Google Analytics. Now, some people don't like to use Google Analytics, but for me, it just gives you access to so much data and if there are issues on your site you can identify them pretty much immediately and as much as people don't like Google Analytics 4 and I am probably included in that it does give you access to even more data so there's going to be a tutorial coming on that soon to help you transition from Google Analytics Universal over to GA4. Next is Google Search Console, and you definitely want to be using this, but it probably is beginners that are going to be guilty of not using it because they wouldn't necessarily know about it. So if you're in that position, make sure you watch my Google Search Console tutorial to make sure you're using it to its fullest, and I'll link that down in the description below. But in a nutshell, it's great for identifying potential issues to do with your website, core web vitals, page experience, indexing issues, and it will also give you access to more data around the types of keywords that are attracting traffic to your website than you get just with Google Analytics. Next is uh, an offline piece of software that I use, which is Excel or Numbers on a Mac. You could use Google Sheets if you wanted to stay on the cloud, and I use these spreadsheets to keep a track of the off-page SEO that I'm doing. So what I mean by that pretty much is to keep a track of my backlinks. They could be backlinks from campaigns that I've set up myself or natural organic backlinks that are coming in. Now the next two aren't really SEO tools, but I do use them again, not necessarily on a daily basis, but definitely each week. And that is Canva, which I use for creating nice looking featured images and resizing images, compressing images a little bit. And then I'll also use stock photos, and I tend to get those from deposit photos and Adobe stock images. And finally, if you are still with me, the last tool that I use, and again, this is a daily basis type tool, is ProRank Tracker. It doesn't really matter whether you use that particular rank tracker or another rank tracker, as long as it's robust and it updates on a daily basis, but ultimately you should be tracking your rankings. Now, if you're not sure exactly which rank tracker to use, then watch this video next where I identify three of the best rank trackers, one that is free, one that is pretty cheap, and one that is my rank tracker of choice. Guys, thanks for watching. I'm gonna have a breather now. Good luck with your projects. Thanks for watching.